Hello guys, uh, this is me Ramesh and welcome to the devopstestingtools.com and today we'll be discussing about uh, the Cypress JavaScript uh, end-to-end automation testing. Okay, uh, in this session I'll be discussing about and how to uh, set up your Cypress into your uh, desktop or laptop machine. Okay, especially you're working on the Windows machine right now. So how to set up this in your Windows machine and we'll follow the, the following steps. Okay, we'll do that once again. And if you want to know about the Cypress basics and architecture, as well as um, um, the uses of the Cypress and advantage of Cypress, you can uh, refer my previous tutorials. Okay, I'll be posting the um, the uh, basics to advance um, the Cypress automation. Okay, as part of the Cypress course. All right, now let's go and uh, uh, set up the Cypress into your desktop or laptop, or Windows machine especially. Okay, so let me go to the one by one and click on the download Node.js and install it in your machine. Okay, how to do that? Just go to the browser and open Node.js. Let's type Node.js here. Okay, as soon as you type Node.js, you can see a uh, bunch of websites here, but you know, the main um, the official website is node.node.js uh, that you you can also choose the second one also, click on this guy. So once you click on that, okay, from here you have to install uh, the Node.js for your Windows machine. So I'm working on the Windows machine, right? So you can go on and click on this Windows installer. If you're working on the Mac, and you have to install this one, right? And then just go on to click on the Windows installer here. All right, so once it is installed, go to the downloads folder. Just click on this Node.js. Okay, so initially it would take some time to install in our machine. It is already installed in my machine, but I'm, uh, anyway, I'm installing again, reinstalling again. All right, so just click on next button, click on accept and click on next one. And again, click on next, okay. So here, uh, there are, you see there are four different options here. Node.js runtime and node package manager. Just try to select the last one, okay. Active path, next, next, and insert it. Started installing it. Yeah, just click on finish button. So once it is done, just close this website. Okay, now what is the next step? The next step is um, set the node home path in the system environment variables. Okay, go to the C drive, open the C drive, and check where the node.js is inside your machine. Go to C, C drive, program files, uh, node.js, yeah, node.js here. Okay, just copy this path. Okay. And you know it, how to set the system environment variables. Just right click on this PC, properties. And here is the advanced system settings. And you will see the bunch of tabs here in this uh, window. Uh, just click on the advanced and click on the environment variables. And here, 
you need to set the node uh, underscore home for the node genus. Okay, just come here, click on the new and type node underscore home and give the path. Click on OK button. It's OK button. OK button. Done. Now, what is the next step? The next step is you know, create a workspace for the Cypress automation, or you can see in the source folder, okay, where you want to create a project. Okay, now I want to create a project for this whole uh, Cypress in my C drive. Uh, let me go to the C drive here. I'm creating the uh, product called as Cypress automation, Cypress JavaScript. Click on this one, okay. Uh, just copy this path, okay. And then come back to this one. Um, uh, the fourth one is the download the Visual Studio Code and install it. Okay. So why we have to uh, install this download? Uh, why we have to download this Visual Studio Code uh, into our mission? The reason is you know we are going to work with the Cypress or uh, JavaScript in the Visual Studio Code only. So if you want to work with any scripting or programming language, you must need uh, a IDE integrated development area uh, uh, environment where you have to write the code. Where you have to write the code. Example, if you're working on Selenium Java, right? So you must use Eclipse or IntelliJ uh, IDE or any other tools. The same way we are using for Cypress with the Studio Code. Just go to the website. Uh, just type here in the Google uh, Visual Studio Code, and you can go dot visual studio dot dot com. Click on this guy, and uh, here just go to download for Windows. Click on this guy. Fine. All right, it's almost done. Let me go to my downloads. It's not yet done. Yeah, done. It's opening here. Yeah. I just click on accept and next, next, next. Yeah, it is taking a lot of time to install, but anyway, that's fine. It's almost done. Click on finish and try to launch it. And then after uh, we need to open the Visual Studio Code and navigate to the Cypress source, fold, uh, source code folder. So just now we created a folder right here in the C drive, C drive Cypress JavaScript folder. So, okay, just copy this folder and open the Visual Studio. So as soon as you open this Visual Studio, right, you will see like, you know, like this, okay? If you want to change the themes, you can change it, okay? Um, you can make it, you know, uh, whatever you want to do, you can just use it. And I need to navigate to my source code folder, go to the file. Okay. Here, if you want to open any file, you can go and open a file here. And if you want to open a workspace, you can open a workspace or, or else if you want to open a folder, you can do like this. Okay. We just created a folder, open this folder and paste the path here and click on OK button. All right, 
So my folder is created here. I mean, uh, it's here. Now we'll go and um, do the next uh, steps. Open the terminal in the Visual Studio Code and generate the package.json. Okay, this is very, very important for the Cypress. Okay, so we need to you know, install, we need to gen, uh, generate the package.json into the uh, this project. Okay, how to do that? Just open the key on this one uh, folder and go to the terminal, click on new terminal. Okay, if you want to initialize or if you want to generate the uh, no package.json, okay, so initially what you have to do, you have to type a command called npm init. So that means you know, we are initializing the node.js, uh, I mean package.json version file. Let's click on enter. Okay, so here, um, when you're trying to generate the package.json, it will ask a couple of things, okay. Uh, don't get confused if you don't want any data, uh, enter any data here, just type, type, type and go with the uh, next process. Package name, so I want to give some package name. Um, Cypress, or as I can do like this, com dot, Cypress, JavaScript. You can give any name, there is no version, I don't want to give anything. Description, um, yeah, this is a end to end um, Cypress JavaScript automation. JavaScript automation. Uh, entry point, I don't want to give it. Test command, I want to give some run. Git repository, I don't have any right now. Keywords, nothing. Author, um, just giving my name, the mesh key. I don't want to give license. Enter, okay. So are you confirming all these things? Yes, I want to confirm. Okay, so now you see the package.json has been generated in this Cypress folder. Okay, just click on this guy and you will see this uh, the package.json file look like this, okay. So if package not dot JSON is not there, your Cypress code will not run. Okay, you got it. Now, what is our next job? Um, yeah, try to download the uh, download or install the Cypress dependencies in the same directory. Okay, in the same project, I want to install the Cypress. How to install the Cypress? Okay, uh, the same command npm install, npm install, then Cypress. Okay, when you when you type this command, right? Okay, the Cypress will uh, will be installed, and whatever the Cypress uh, dependencies are there, automatically installed into this particular under this particular folder or directory. Okay, okay, fine, that is fine. Um, but if you want to share this project to someone, right? Okay, again, he has to do the same job, like you know, npm install Cypress uh, in his terminal um, command prompt. Okay, so uh, in order to avoid that kind of situation, right? You have to do, you have to give a double hyphen C double dev, uh, iPhone dev. So when you uh, give this command, right, okay, npm install Cypress double hyphen save, double minus save or double hyphen save, minus dev. So this means, you know, it will save all the dependencies in this project folder. And when you share this project to someone else in your team, okay, they don't need to command this, they need to type, type this command, okay, they can automatically go and run the Cypress. I'm just uh, enter this one, because uh, if I want to share to someone, they should they don't need to install uh, the Cypress in their machine. You carefully observe that you know the Cypress left side, the Cypress JavaScript folder is having two two files now. The one is a node underscore models and package.json. So as soon as you type this, I mean, as soon as you install this Cypress, right? Okay, automatically these folders will be generated inside that. There are a couple of more files over there here. So it will take some time now based on your internet speed. So yeah, it's downloading the Cypress. If your internet speed is slow, it will take a lot of time, probably 10 minutes or like that. If your internet is fast, then approximately we can finish in one or two minutes like that.
yeah, it is installed successfully. Uh, this is the locks here. And then after the next command is, so once it is installed, then verify the Cypress installed properly or not. Okay, just go and check here. Uh, there will be one more code created here, package-log.json. Okay, probably you can see uh, the couple of things related to the Cypress here. Okay, so these are the you know, list of dependencies that is part of the, the Cypress, right? And there is one more folder called is you know, node, node underscore models. And here you will see the you know, uh, a bunch of you know, related um, the Cypress libraries. And as well as uh, also we have the uh, JavaScript um, examples um, of the Cypress scripts. Okay. Now if you go here, okay. Now we'll do one thing. We'll go to the next step, create a new folder on the project and create a new js file and start designing the test case okay how to do that you can see that so i'm just going to create uh, not here i'll do one thing what i'll do i'll install a method called as npm not here um no js sorry system support yeah we need to open the Cypress here. Uh, how to open the Cypress? Uh, slash, so node, tab, and dot bin folder. Okay. And here inside here, we have to open the Cypress. So if you navigate to this folder, you will see the Cypress bat file. So we'll see that in the C drive. If you go to the node models, dot bin folder, you'll see that Cypress bat file. So here um, we are opening the Cypress. Cypress space open. Just enter. Yeah. If you look at this issue, you know, this is a common issue uh, that everybody faces in the system, essentially. Uh, for this, you know, uh, we have a fix. Uh, you do one thing uh, whenever you get this issue, right? Uh, you have to copy this message and you know, type in the Google and you will get the complete solution. But anyway, I have a solution right now. The problem is, you know, um, we need to set the execution policy at the PowerShell script, uh, PowerShell um, window. So that already having that uh, code. Let's go here. Yeah, this is the issue. And for this, you know, first you have to open the PowerShell window. Open the PowerShell, so Windows PowerShell, or I just type PowerShell here. Uh, open this PowerShell window. All right, so now, yeah, here, just copy this message, get iPhone execution policy list. All right, see, so you will see the, uh, the, uh, the group of uh, policies here, machine policy, users policy, process, current user, and local machine policy. And what we have to do, we have to set this, um, uh, the policy is undefined, okay? By default is undefined and we have to make it as unrestricted. That means no, uh, there is no restriction to run your files. And copy this message, line of code, paste here. Okay, here what I'm doing, set iPhone execution policy, iPhone scope, the username is the current user and iPhone execution policy is unrestricted. So then as soon as I enter this command, right, so it will change this undefined to the unrestricted. Yes. Now we go and type this execution policy list. You see this unrestricted. Now, if you go back to the Visual Studio and type the same command. You see that? Now the Cypress is going to open. See what uh, it will do in this command. Like example, when you type this uh, uh, slash node modules and uh, dot bin Cypress open. So when you do type this command, right? So automatically it will create a sample project for the Cypress where you can see the uh, sample automation scripts for you know for website that is given by by default the Cypress uh, team. Yeah, probably it will take some time. Uh, I think we're getting one more issue. This command field with the following script: iPhone smoke, iPhone test, platform name. Looks like this is the first time you are using Cypress 4.9.0. Yes. All right. 
Okay, let me type the same command again. Yeah, I just rerun this command and it's working fine. Now it is open. Okay, if you go back and see in the command, right? So uh, I just type, uh, I just retype this command. Now it's opening the uh, Cypress window. Okay, so if you go and see this left side project folder, right, you see the Cypress folder. Okay, this is a sample um, uh, project they have given by the Cypress team. Uh, if you're working for any kind of project in your, uh, your company or you know for your own purpose, right? Okay, so better to come to this web, uh, this uh, Cypress. Uh, this project folder and you will see the bunch of I mean, examples. Okay, you will see the bunch of examples and this is the best way to learn it. Okay, uh, example, if you want to automate any, any kind of web applications, right? Probably you have to handle multiple uh, things. Okay, you will come across with different kind of solutions, different kind of you know, questions, uh, different kind of problems. Uh, I would say um, if you want to enter data into the text box, if you want to click on a button, okay, if you want to validate a drop down, okay, if you want to validate a multiple uh, multi entity text box, okay, so those kind of things, so how to handle those kind of things. So uh, they have written all the code in this sample one, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll run it and show you how to run that, okay. Now, uh, so as soon as you type this command, right, the Cypress open, the, it will open a window called this is the window, okay. This is the window and here there are different type of browsers that uh, is supporting by the Cypress. Basically Cypress support, supports the three different browsers, Chrome, Firefox and one more browser is the Electron, Electron browser, which is a, a Cypress browser. All right. So um, this window is open, right? So what is there in this window? This window contains all the test scripts, all the test scripts that you automated as part of your project. Okay. That means you know, all the JS files will be loaded in this window. Okay, so where it is there in the examples folder, if you go here, uh, go to the integration and examples, here is a JavaScript, I mean, uh, JS files, all the JS files. Okay, code was already written. Now go back here, I want to run uh, any of the tests here. So how to run it? Just click on any of the JS file here. I want to click on actions. As soon as you click on action, right? So probably it will ask some, you know, follow access. This is the first time it will ask you. And then after it will open the browser, you see that browser is opening back say. Yeah, initially it will take some time to run. And here left side, you see the list of commands, I mean list of steps that you have been written in the um, your JS file in this action class. And you see the type data is entering here. You see the data is entering here. And left side, it is getting pass or fail based on your action. This is testing, right? It's testing that. Perfect. So all the steps uh, have been passed. If any of the pair step is failed, right, so it will show as you know this color, this into red color. And if it is passed, it will show in the green color. I mean, yeah, uh, it's not a green color; it's a kind of blue color. Uh, it should be like this. Okay. Okay. This is the history of you know particular test reasons. And now you just close this guy. Okay. If you want to open other test one, you can click on this one. You can do that. Okay. So I'm just don't close this guy. Don't close this guy. Okay. Now we'll come back to the uh, this site, the Visual Studio Code project, and here uh, I will be creating a folder here, not a folder. Uh, what I'm doing right now, I'm creating a JS class in this file. JS class in this file. This is called uh, example register. Register, okay. And your file extension must be JS. JS, okay. So what does it mean register? So I'm going to automate um, a web application, okay. Um, in that, I'm going to automate the registration scenarios. So how to automate those things, okay? I'll do sample scenarios so that you can also do the same uh, thing in uh, your same, uh, same thing you can practice in your system. Okay, so first, uh, before you start, right, okay, you just go and verify what, what type of script has been written inside this, the previous one, okay? 
here there are a lot of things are there don't get confused okay each and everything is very clear and um, uh, there is one more question like you know people are asking me frequently uh, if you want to learn the cypress okay uh, we need to be expertise in javascript it's not like that see most of the uh, code will be written in cypress only okay you always use cypress commands mostly but you use some java javascript related uh, functions okay or concepts in the uh, cypress where it is required but 90% of the uh, code will be written in the cypress only cypress will give the internal commands the functions and everything okay so you no need to confuse it and it will give the um, um it will, you will not get confused on that okay i'll show you that all right now let me go back to the register and here i want to tell you few things okay before you start uh, writing uh, the automation for your web application what you have to do first you know you have to be ready with your test cases test cases what test cases go here uh, this is my website okay i want to automate not my website this is i want to automate it uh, i'm sorry uh now this one go back demo web shop first a demo web shop Uh, this is a website i want to automate it this is a simple one if somebody wants to uh, learn uh, and somebody wants to test a uh, application you better go and automate this website okay this is the best way website to automate it now i want to automate this web, uh, this registration screen okay just click on this one and come back to the um, screen now you have to select the gender button and type your first name last name and uh, your email id and the password and click on register button done the job is done then click on continue button all right so this is what uh, you have to do this is the first scenario right so uh, before starting any kind of automation testing right okay make sure you should be ready with your ready with your test scenarios now i'm creating a test scenario document okay basically this a job can be done by the manual team i'll go to the cypress automation here i'll be creating a folder demo web shop scenarios all right so we need to follow the process especially okay if you do any kind of automation testing you have to follow the process all right so this year i'm going to write um, the register scenarios here all right and here the scenario template is like this okay this is my own template and you can also follow your own template that's not a problem the scenario id okay and here uh, module or screen name this is the manual step guys don't worry that i'm teaching in this uh, automation uh, here uh, test the scenario description description all right then uh, i want to write a uh, test the data if you want it you can do it uh, or else you can go with the test steps test steps and then uh, it is a simple or medium or complex type of test case that you're automating it all right so this is the common thing that you know if you're working on the manual testing right so probably should know this um yeah I'm sorry i want to remove this one minute All right. Yeah. This call our uh, demo web shop scenarios. All right. So first one is the TS underscore zero zero one, and your model name is what's it? Register. 
okay if you want to add any kind of project name here right you can also add here not a problem at the top you can add something project name is equal to uh, demo workshop demo workshop all right now i want to make some color here All right, so now go here, test the scenario description. My test scenario is example, I want to test the registration screen with valid uh, details. Uh, here, verify the registration screen, registration station um, with valid information or else it is verify the registration screen in demo web shop, demo web shop with valid data valid data okay and here i'm giving something called as you know uh, the test data which is required to your uh, this one log out this one click one all right so you have to click on this register link right okay first we'll go and write the um, this thing. test data test data uh, you need a first name first name is uh, ramesh and this the last name the color and uh, the email address it will ask you probably you can enter um arcade testing tools whether gmail.com and then up to password password it will ask you one two three four five or else yeah six Confirm password. I'm giving same thing. All right. So this is the test data that we have to provide in your same thing. All right. So what are the steps here? The steps, you know, say, you know how you're uh, doing this process. Okay. So initially, I'm I'm launching the browser, navigating this URL. So the same thing. Okay. So launch uh, launch the Chrome browser. Chrome browser, and the second one, navigate to URL. Third one, um, yeah, click on register screen, register link. And the fourth one, um, click on gender as male, I'm giving it here. And fifth one, um, click on, basically should give here, okay? Should give here. Here I'm giving gender male. All right, so here click on yeah gender male and um, enter first name and uh, sixth one enter last name seventh one enter email the text box. And the eighth one, enter password. Ninth one, uh, enter confirm password. And click on, click on, register button. So, okay, this is what our scenario. Go here and do the same operations. Okay, all right. So now let me close this step. Sorry. All right. Now come back to the Cypress um, with the studio code. Okay, your scenario is ready. Now you want to automate your scenario. Okay. So first thing is you now the first and foremost thing is you now there are a um, couple of uh, uh, keywords that you have to use in the Cypress automation. Okay. What kind of keywords you see? Mostly you will see uh, describe okay and you will see it it and before each okay you always see these uh, keywords okay whenever you write a test scripts in the site post okay and we'll learn one by one what is the purpose of before each what is the purpose of describe and what is the purpose of it okay people are talking in a different manner but you know as per our understanding what is the purpose of describe 
you see when you type the describe here it's automatically coming right describe okay so that means simple describe is nothing but we are defining the purpose of this file purpose of this file my purpose is for this registration i'm going to write all the scenarios i'm going to write all the test scripts which are converted this manual to automation those things will be written in this particular file example if you have five different scenarios as part of the registration model okay so five different scenarios you are going to automate in this file example so if you want to do that uh, in the describe what you have to do um, automate automate the end to end scenarios end to end scenario end to end scenarios on register module simple so tomorrow if you are creating a login screen here example i want to create a login screen here login screen okay login.js okay here what you'll do you just type this describe and go here and type um automate automate the end to end scenarios in scenario for login module so that means you know, you're defining the purpose of this particular uh js class okay defining the, the particular file okay i'm defining the registration file here like this and what about this one next one it there is a it one it keyword what is the purpose of it same thing i told you right whatever the scenarios you are writing as part of this project okay example here i'm gonna close this yeah this is a scenario right okay you're gonna copy this guy and come back here and paste here okay this is one scenario okay tomorrow you have another scenario come here the other scenario is uh, verify the registration screen in demo web shot with invalid data with invalid information invalid data there is an, one more screen one, one more uh, scenario um here um you can see already existing email okay like this you, know, you have to um define your scenarios with it keyword okay this describe is nothing but you know, under describe it will contain all the scenarios of the registration model that is the purpose of the describe and it is nothing but you know it is nothing but it is a different scenarios different scenarios as part of your particular modular screen okay now we'll, we'll start okay this is fine and what of the before each sir? before each i'll talk about this one before each in the sense example uh, for every scenario you have to do some common steps that means you know prerequisites okay example you want to launch a browser navigate to url for every scenario it is there so in that case whatever the prerequisites are there okay prerequisites to the scenario prerequisites to scenario so that thing will be defined in the before each so this one you have to put here this is the process this is a describe first before each second and it is the third one okay so you have to define like this okay now we'll go on to define this now we'll go on to write the scripts first describe describe okay and here and see uh, i'm gonna write a registration module scenarios simple rls model scripts okay then after comma comma okay so here we need to define a, a lambda expression or function okay this is a common one function of open bracket close bracket and here open power bracket and close bracket inside this we have to write the code okay like this we have to provide it and come here i'm typing the before each before each how it was different before each you go and see that if you want to see the previous one you see this before each before each okay so um i'm using the function right i'm using a function here here function i'm using it this time i'm using this time i'm using the different stuff here um launch uh, sorry um, launch browser and navigate to url okay comma here i'm not using any functions i'm giving like this lambda expression lambda expression See, you can also use this either use this concept or use this concept okay both are same the purpose is same okay all right so in this one what i'm trying to do is i'm going to 
uh, okay, I want to launch a browser and navigate to URL, right? Okay, how to do that in the Cypress? Simple. The Cypress keyword is CY, Cy dot. Basically, when you when you are working on the Selenium or any other QTP or whatever it is, okay, basically what we are trying to do is driver dot, okay, driver dot get URL, get up URL. Here we have a visit, okay, visit is a command, okay. Inside that we have to provide the URL of the website, okay. You are the website. Go here. This is my website. Okay. This is the website I want to automate it. Copy this guy and come back here. Paste here. Okay. There is no comma or semicolon at end of end of the particular line in the Cypress. Okay. Make sure you have to follow that. Once it is done, right? Okay, you have to come outside. You have to come outside. Not out, outside the describe, inside the describe, but outside the before each. Before each will do, will uh will execute this code. Okay, let's we'll execute this code for every scenario. Now I want to I want to write a scenario here. Here, hit keyword, double quotation, and copy the scenario. Copy the scenario. I'm gonna copy this guy and come back here, paste here. Okay. All right. So how to write a function here, sir? Here, double quotation, double uh, open bracket, close bracket, and here uh, the same process. All right. This is fine. Now, fine. Okay, cy dot visit is fine. Launching the browser, now getting URL. Now, my question is how to take the properties of particular this function. This one, login, registration, and uh, mail, first name, last name, and so on. How to take the properties? That is a difficult one. Okay. Um, in in Selenium, when you are talking about Selenium, right? So Selenium, we have we open the Chrome browser, and uh, when you press the F2 will the developer toolbar will open. Uh, inside that we are inspecting the element uh, for the particular uh, control in the web, web application and we are taking the property xpath or css idr name right but here is a different process so if you want to take the properties you need to launch the browser first you need to launch the browser first what i'm trying to do is i'm not i didn't close this guy okay why i didn't close this one uh if you don't see that where is my text here register there yeah register you see this but when you click on this guy just click on this one Browser will launch with a URL. Perfect. You see this? My browser is launched and the test is also passed. Before it also sparse. Okay, so we didn't write any kind of steps here. Okay, fine. We'll come to the point. Now we have to take the properties of each and every element as part of the registration screen. Okay. First, we need to click on the registration screen, right? So get the property of this registration screen. If you look at this, if you if you carefully look at this window, okay, you will see the bunch of options here. Okay, you will see the bunch of options. You see the one more option, one option is called open selective playground. Okay, this is for inspecting the elements of your web application. Just go and click on this guy. Okay, now the entire uh, application is highlighted, right? Now go here and inspect the element whichever you want it. Click on this guy. Okay, now you see the Cypress is automatically giving the property with the code. Property with the code. Copy this one. This is the copy option. And if you don't want, if you can go with other kind, other other kind of properties, see what it contains. But always get the see what it get. Copy this guy. You come back to your code, and here you just type here. Okay, okay. So this is a register, right? So I want to click on the register. So click. All right. No semicolon, nothing. All right. Perfect. See, half of the code has been given by the Cypress only. Okay, you are not doing anything here. Okay, your job is easy. Now, once you click on this guy, okay. Now, let me go here. Click on this one, and come back here. I want to click on the mail button, right? So inspect the element again. Come back here. Yeah. Select this one and copy this path. Here also, I want to click on this one. Now, next one, sir. First name. Copy this guy and come here. That's it. Here, I don't want to click. I want to type some data. So use type command, sir. Use type command, and inside that you have to provide. In Selenium, sending is there, right? Same like that. Perfect. Now I go down here, and I want to go to the last name. Copy. The same operation type, sir. See, for entering the data in the Cypress, is you are using type command and clicking the same operation, dot click operation. Okay, fine. Click 
All right. And the third one, email address. Copy this guy, paste here, dot type. And here, rk test123 at gmail.com. And go back to the browser again. Password. Copy this one. Dot type. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Go back and take the properties of confirm password too. Okay, copy the same stuff here. Paste it. Then finally, we have to click on the register button. Copy this one. This is the click operation, right? Dot click operation. Dot click operation. Perfect. This is my one scenario. Okay. Now let's see whether this how the scenario is working fine or not. Okay. Now I, I'm just saving it. Okay. Just side by side here. Let's put it like this. Um, yeah. I didn't save anything right now. As soon as you save it, right, automatically it will trigger the execution. You see this? It's clicking on entering the data. Perfect. Job is done. All right. Job is done. All right. Perfect. This is the first scenario that we have executed. All the steps here, left side. You look at this one, each and every step. Okay. How the data is entering. First name. Here, message is entered. Last name, Rikala, email address. Okay, so everything is executed. Look at this. Perfect. Your registration is completed. Now we have to click on the logout button, sir. Okay, because this is very, very important. We have to click on the logout button. For each and every scenario, you have to go and log out the button. Otherwise, uh, Will be a remain logged in only. So click on the logout button, same operation, right? All right, perfect. Now, if you go and uh, run this one, it will give an error message called, you know, already email exists. I'm just adding some more word here. I'm different. I'm changing the email. It's perfect. It's logged off. All right. Now I want to do the different scenarios. Here. I want to do the different scenario. Okay. Um, okay, this is fine. Uh, but this is a sample example uh, in this uh, session. Um, the same code, okay. The same thing you can run and you know you can try with the different scenarios, okay. If you want to copy the same stuff and you can go with the different scenarios like this. Um, verify the registration screen uh, in demo web shop with the invalid test data, uh, invalid some data, invalid data, okay. And you have to change according to your scenarios, whatever is there in the scenarios list. Scenarios list, okay. You have to write the second scenario here and start uh, uh, generating the code as, uh, as per your test case. That's okay. So this is for the uh, day one session. And in the coming sessions, I'll be talking about the um, how to do the validations in the Cypress. Okay. Uh, when you come to the negative kind of scenario, right? So if you probably, uh, if you go here, click on the registration button, link, and you click on the register link, you will see the bunch of error messages here. Okay. Okay. I want to validate these error messages, which are coming properly or not. As part, of, as part of the negative validations. That will be discussed in the next session. Until then, bye. Thank you so much.